You are now viewing Prophet H. Walker and True Life Pentecost Church. Those that are viewing and seeking after righteousness, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. President Obama is the leader of the known world today. And that man through his Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton, is going to third world countries and making them change their laws on sodomy and causing them to deny the very God of all creation. And it Receive words from Prophet I received Walker. some emails uh, last night. Amen. I want to think I want to open up in uh, 2 and 19. We certainly honor our great God, yes. the mighty God of heaven and earth. Yes. And his name is Jesus. Yes. He shall save his people from their sins. Yes. I don't have any trouble yes. understanding the Godhead. Yes. One Lord, one faith, and one baptism. Yes. His revealed names in the New Testament church is Jesus and he is Lord of all. Amen. Came to humanity as the Christ child. Yes. Yeah. Wrapped himself in a human body and allowed himself to be born of a woman. But the Bible says he was God manifest in the flesh. Yeah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory. Great is the mystery of Godliness. Yeah. God was manifest in the flesh. Yeah. I believe that's a statement. Right. He's not asking nobody to believe it. Right. Yeah. He's just telling you a factual statement. Yeah. Praise God, I am Jesus only from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. Yeah. I worship no God but Jesus and Jesus only. Yeah. And he's a great God and much God. And Amen. he's all the God any humanity will ever need. Yeah. Uh, now, in way of praising God uh, through sacrifice, uh, we've got some heavy envelopes here. Uh, love offering $100 to Elder Ricky. Marshall family, $51. Uh, daughter Hutchison, $50. Uh, heavy envelope here. Oh, praise God. Another envelope. Amen. Brother Kenny, $120. Uh, Elder Willis, $350. Daughter Samaya, fifty dollars. Daughter Promise, five dollars and three cents. That's about about four hundred dollars. Amen. 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 Praise God. Daughter Leticia, another heavy envelope, three hundred and five dollars. Praise God. Ever since she's been here, she's been giving. She come in giving. Yeah. The greatest her reward. Amen. According to the scripture. Uh, Elder Lansing Smith, another envelope pretty heavy here, $385. Yeah. Now this is Elder Lansing and family. Yeah. Amen. 
He can't take all the credit. <laughs> Elder Ricky, uh, well, we already called that one. Amen. Well, thank God. I thank God for all of you who are continuing to make sacrifice for the kingdom. Now, it shows something. And a matter of fact, that's how my text is going to go tonight. Uh, I said, uh, 2 Timothy 2 and 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God stands assured, having this seal. Having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. Now, let's read that letter, letter part. And let, let, and let, let everyone. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ do not depart from iniquity. Now, again, the foundation of God stands assured. In other words, it, it, it's already settled. Having this seal. Now, the seal means an identification. You know, back in the old days when a king would sign a decree or a law, on that paper, he, he would take his ring, which had a signet or an insignia, and he would dip it in hot wax, and he'd press it into the paper. And when whoever was uh, responsible uh, for reading that, that decree, he was, oh, oh, this has got the, the, the king's seal. Yeah. So he hurried up and expedited that, that, that paper. So I'm saying, brothers and sisters, God is saying the foundation. Now, before you can build anything, you've got to first establish a foundation. Amen. Now, in Deuteronomy 30 chapter, the Bible is very clear. I've set before you this day good and evil, which deals with the principles of right and wrong. Now, YouTube, you, you pay attention to where I'm going tonight. Whenever you have the principles of right and wrong clearly established, it can only come from someone with divine authority. So God himself establishes what is right and what is wrong. It's up to humanity to accept this guidance and follow after the Lord with a true spirit of meekness and a humility of heart to be guided and corrected while you are guided. So again, it's, God says the foundation or the very basic of his church is based on departing from iniquity. That's right. In other words, don't sin. Amen. But it's not in us to live a holy life, so God sent his spirit right. again to indwell and humanity to guide humanity and when sometime when the flesh don't want to go if you got the Holy Ghost in you the Holy Ghost will begin to guide you and and and, and persuade you it won't make you but it certainly will persuade you to follow the right way many have come and many have gone Amen. more will come and more will leave Amen. but the foundation of God is still the same Amen. Let everyone who nameth the name of Christ depart from sin. So again, brothers and sisters, we have to learn how to pick up our cross and follow after God according to the scripture that God has given for the church and according to that spirit which he has uh, established that will lead us and guide us in all truth. He will come and he will lead us and guide us. But again, uh, where's the he? Amen. God has gone on in heaven. And again, I want to say to my, my writer, <laughs> first of all, I think I shared this the other night. If you don't study to prove yourself a workman unto God needs not to be ashamed, you're going to constantly put your foot in your mouth. Right, now, you're trying to correct me, and I'm sent to teach you. How are you going to correct the teacher? Isn't that what's wrong with Christianity yeah. today? you got too many students trying to teach the teacher. And when you got too many teachers, then you still have the same confusion. Yeah. Amen. So God settled it by having one prophet in each dispensation of time to bring forth his unmedicated word. We've got to understand the word of God is true. And it's for a, 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 a purpose, an intent of purpose, and that is to do correction. Uh, give me 2 Timothy 3.16. I want to connect this, and I want you to also uh, follow uh, the prophet's writing in Isaiah. I believe it's 30 and 8. Go note it in a tablet, write it in a book, that it might be for the time to come and forever. Yeah. So again, I want everyone, and especially uh, my writer from last night, to understand that the Word of God 
is for a correcting a people so that people can be counted worthy when they stand before the judgment throne of God. Now I'm in 2 Timothy 3.16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. How can you write me? Give me Amos uh, chapter 2. I want to jump in at verse 10, 11, and 12. Uh, How can anyone try to express or explain uh, Bible scripture if you don't understand the guidance of the Holy Ghost. Amen. To try to say that a particular point of view by the prophets is not for the New Testament church today, you're out of order. You've got to understand the division between Old and New Testament. Yes, the Old Covenant was done away with and God introduced a New Covenant. Amen. But the New Covenant was because the people could not keep the First Covenant. Right. That's why He introduced a New Covenant. Now in Amos, here the writer is trying to express something to the people. Uh, pick me up in verse 10. Also, I brought you up from the land of Egypt and led you 40 years through the wilderness to possess the land of the Amorites. Yes. And I raised up of your sons for prophets. I raised up of your sons for prophets. And of your young men for Nazarites. Young men for what? Nazarites. Now, if you connect this with number 6 and 5, it says the vow of a Nazarite is not to cut the hair or shave the beard. Now that's the vow. The Apostle Paul took that vow. Why? Because he was trying to emulate the Apostles and the God of glory who came before him. When you look at any caricatures of history, of paintings uh, concerning the Apostles and Jesus, all of them had shoulder length hair and a beard. And that was for a reason. He said, well, yeah, but that don't count today and, and circumcision doesn't count today. I didn't say the Nazarite vow saved you. And I didn't say circumcision saved you. Amen. But that still don't mean it's wrong for you to get circumcised and it's wrong for you to take the vow of the Nazarite. If it was wrong, why did God set the example himself and the apostles set the example themselves? And I've tried to express to people, there are certain scriptural contexts that has to be rightly divided. A woman's long hair is given her for her glory. Yes. Long never was intended in the original text. It yes. could not have been. Because all women do not have long hair. Amen. So it couldn't have meant long. It had nothing to do with length. And if you read your Greek text, it says fix. Yes. To fix the hair. Paul was describing women fix their hair different than men. You're dealing with feminine and masculine. You're not talking about length, Amen. praise God. And if we start to get into semantics, right. where in the Bible did it tell you you're supposed to shave your head when the prophet said, don't shave the head? I ain't that prophet preach. And when you cut back into Western culture, yes. the Western culture taught you, I said Western culture, not the Bible, Amen. that every other Saturday you got to go and get your hair cut Amen. so that you can look neat. Neat for who? And who's going to cut the hair? Right. Where in the, in, the, in, in the Bible did it express that you were supposed to go to a barber every now and then? That's right. Amen. The bald head was a sign of mourning. Of course, so by, praise the Lord, the Levite priest or the prophet. Amen. But that was a sign of something catastrophic yes. that had taken place. But that was not for you to do every other week. So don't try to correct me for taking the vow of a Nazarite that's Bible when you shave the sides of your hair that's against the Holy Scripture. Amen. <clears throat> Most of you don't know who I am anyhow. Amen. But I thank God I know who I am. Amen. And I got a testimony you don't have. Right, right. Don't try to equate with me. The best thing you can do is try to listen to me Amen. and learn from me. Amen. Amen. Prophet. Hallelujah. Amen. God ain't never had but one prophet at a time one. to teach the people. Amen. And all this confusion that's out there is because you got too many preachers Amen. saying what thus saith the Lord and God ain't never spoken to them. Right. All right. So you need to hush your mouth Amen. and do like the bad little boy, sit over in the corner and be quiet. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The foundation of God stands ashore having this seal.
Yes. The Lord knoweth them that are his. And let yes. everyone who nameth the name of Christ yes. or water baptized in Jesus' name yes. depart from sin. Yes. Now in the book of Deuteronomy, I think I want to go 23. Connect me with verse 17 and 18. Yeah. Now, here, God again is given an instruction. Now, these hypocrite preachers want to correct me on certain Bible semantics and won't dare touch on the sodomite lesbian invasion yeah. that's taken over America, and if it takes over America, it's going to take over the world. That's right. Why don't you preachers stand up and understand you got a Bible here? The Bible is a sword. A sword cuts asunder. A sword divides yeah. something when it's used in that manner. A sword can, praise the Lord, it, if you use it in that way, it'll cut somebody's head off. Amen. Separate the head from the body. Yep. The sword of God separates those who are right and those who are unright by the scripture tense. Yeah. So when the scripture tells you how to live, you got to live how the scripture says. Because that's the sword of God. That's the word of God. Where am I at? Deuteronomy 23 and 17. Yes. There shall be no harlot of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of no the daughters of Israel. No harlot. No prostitute yes. of the daughters of Israel. Now that's a statement for the church. And you can't find nowhere where that was ever rescinded by apostolic law. You can't find that. Amen. Now I said God gave certain instructions to the prophets and especially the Latter-day prophets and apostles told Peter what you bind on earth I'll bind in heaven what you loose on earth I'll loose in heaven That's right. that gives Peter a, a, a leeway to introduce certain scripture text that would be beneficial for the church that may not be in uh, you may, in, maybe he didn't find it in the Torah All right. maybe Jesus did not happen to mention it but he mentioned certain things. The point I'm trying to show you that God gave certain power to those who would follow after him. What you have to understand, Peter's not here now. All right, Peter's dead, waiting for the trump of God to sound. Amen. 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 But the church of God is still here. Amen. So the spirit of truth will come to lead you and guide you in the truth. But you got to know the spirit of truth when it comes. I believe the Bible says when he comes. When he comes. Praise yeah. the Lord. The so he deals with a personality yeah. because the spirit cannot be a he because the spirit don't have no body. Hey. I prove it when Jesus walked in the room. He said, fear of me and fear not. I'm not a spirit. Yeah. I'm not a ghost. For a spirit have not flesh and bone. Yeah. So he said, feel of me. In other words, I'm in a body. Yeah. Now he was not in his, his, his earthly body because that was gone. He was in now his divine body. Right. So God has two bodies. One went to Calvary's cross and died. But the other body was the same body that met Abraham on the plains of memory and set out and ate with him. Amen. Now he had to have a body because Abraham said, No, I behold three men, and one of them was the Lord. Oh, and Abraham sit out and ate with an angel. It didn't say angel. Two angels, yes. We picked that up in 19th chapter of Genesis. But one, now there were three. The two men that went to save Lot and his family were angels. But the one that stayed with Abraham and talked with the Lord, praise the Lord. Oh, amen. That was God Almighty. God Almighty. Yeah. In a human body. Pardon me, in a divine body. Yeah. Amen. The one that died, that was the human body. Yeah. The mystery of God is deep. But the word of God is here. Amen. And the word of God must be received and then put into a action within the individual to create a conversion. If you are not converted, you are not saved. Amen. The word convert means to alter or change. Yes. If you are not changed, you can repeat Romans 10th chapter from now till the trump of God sounds the end and you still ain't going to glory. Amen. You got to be changed. Amen. 
and the word of God again, that sword changes you. Now, I mean, uh, we read verse 17. Pick me up in verse 18. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a harlot or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord thy God. Back that up to verse 17 again. There shall be no harlot of the daughters of Israel. No harlot of the daughters of Israel. Nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Where, where is this preachers using the word gay? Amen. I, know that's right. I would not set foot in a church where a preacher had to submit himself, humble himself before this wicked coalition and say, oh, he, he's gay. Gay means happy. Right. And uh, sissy ain't happy. Amen. Loose here. Praise Amen. God. Amen. The Bible says it calls him sodomite. And if you go to your dictionary, a sodomite is someone who commits the act of sodomy. Right. Yes. And sodomy means male to male sex or sex with a dog Amen. or with an animal. Yes. Now, Jesus used the term in Revelation 22, 15, dog. Now, he wasn't talking about a four-legged animal. He's talking about a human being. Now, really, the, 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 the text That's right. comes to a... I'm going into some deep water here. I'm going to try to do it without going X. Amen. Amen. It dealt with imitation right. of animals. Yes. yes. And... A union. Amen. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. Yes. So that's what the term uh, of the sodomite connection with dog. Yes. Now it also was used in the very negative because they were trying to overemphasize something that was so filthy and nasty. Paul said what they do in secret. It's a shame to even talk about it. Amen. Can't even mention it. So I'm saying that when Jesus, the God of glory, called them dogs, he knew what he was talking about because he was taking his main thought text from Deuteronomy 23rd chapter, which he wrote Amen. and gave to the prophet. Yes. Hallelujah. So I'm saying, brothers and sisters, when we have a mind to be saved, we've got to allow ourselves to be changed. And change comes to alter a person's character so that that character can reflect something that's righteous and any time you are too contrary and stubborn you don't want to be corrected you don't want to be taught you don't want to be guided then you need to come before a holy mountain and stretch out and don't leave there until God fills you with the Holy Ghost people are trying to live holy without the Holy Ghost and you can't do it strife and bitterness that's not the Holy Ghost. That's right. yes. And let's not be busy by these and other people's matter. Amen. 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 You never know when someone will error. You never know. Amen. You just thank God that something inside of me is holding me steadfast Amen. to the true faith. I thank God. Amen. Amen. That you, we, we may have thought about it a time or two, but uh -uh. no, no, I ain't gonna backslide. Come too far now. I can't give up now. Hallelujah. Right. Devil loose here. Get yeah. on away from me. Yeah. You got the wrong one. Right. Praise God. Go on down the street somewhere. Yeah. Or across the street somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. But leave me alone. Right. Hallelujah. Yeah. Church, we are confronted. Get me Revelation 13 chapter. I want to go to verse 4 through 7. We are confronted with an enemy yeah. that has challenged God Almighty and His church. And I see more and more laws being passed, legislative acts, where they are trying to destroy the church of God. This thing is real. This battle that we're in is real. And it's time for somebody to stand up and be coming. It's time to take sides because I'm trying to let you know the trump of God is soon to sound because God is tired of all this wickedness, all this blasphemy, everything that he sees that's contrary to his word of God. And if he don't blow that trumpet pretty soon, then no church member is going to be worth saving. If he don't come soon, no flesh is going to be worth saving. President Obama is the leader of the known world today. Amen. And that man through his Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton, is going to third world countries and making them change their laws on sodomy and causing them to deny the very God 
of all creation. Anytime you change your law concerning the word, you are defying God. That makes you anti-God. So I'm trying to say, brothers and sisters, when you are tested and you have a family and they offer you a, 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 a chicken dinner with all the trimming, meat, loaf, and all, praise God, everything. If you just rescind your laws on sodomy or you keep eating oatmeal every day, you'll scratch your head and start to think. But I'm showing you, nobody but a devil can offer you food for your blasphemy against God. Amen. Nobody but a devil can make you do that. Amen. That's why we got to make our calling and election short. Yes. And we've got to understand that when you get saved, you're going to pass through some fire. And you don't bet your testimony on somebody else's testimony. You don't bet your testimony or because somebody else left the church. I guess I'll leave too. Well, you should have been gone in the first place. All right, Father. Hallelujah. Come on. God don't call cowards. Amen. He said, I have not given you the spirit of fear. Yes. But of a sound mind. Praise yes. God. Where am I at? Revelation 13 and 4. And they worshiped the dragon which gave power to the beast. The dragon or Satan who gave power to the beast. Now hear me. Every dispensation of time, there is a beast. Yes. Someone who represents the spirit of the Antichrist. Someone who, by a proven record, opposes the righteousness of God and his divine word. Obama is that beast and this revelation of time, I know it, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Amen. That man has no fear of keep pushing this sodomite lesbian uh, proposition to its fullest and trying to make all states submit because he's the federal leader. That's right. Federal means he's over the whole country. That's right. He's over every state government. That's right. He's the federal leader. Amen. When you continue to challenge God in his moral codes, you bring into play what is taking place now, a subhuman quality of character where a person has no, he has no decency about him. Anytime a man goes to bed with another man, there's no decency about him. Anytime a woman goes to bed with another woman, to do what? Praise God. There's no decency or level involved. There's no code of character where you can say, oh, I, I can't, no, I can't do that. Amen. You know, hey man, I might go out here and jump in a mud puddle, but no, I ain't going to do that. Forget about that. Toy stores are more popular ever before in history. And all of them at one time were outlawed. Now you can go on the internet and you can order them. So the mail order is quite popular because some women going into the store, they be, but they want the toy. Right. What's wrong with the real thing? I know that's now I hope that's over somebody's head. Right now, yeah. Praise God. Amen. A toy. Children play with toys, not adults. Right now, yeah. Glory. Yeah. Can you say amen? Amen. I feel like teaching tonight. Hey. Hallelujah. Yeah. Revelation 13 and verse 14, read 15. Oh, 14, 15. Hallelujah. And power was given. Was that, was that verse 13? Oh, and they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast who is able to make war with him? Who is able to stand up against President Obama? Who? Nobody. Read. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him. Power was given unto him. To continue forty and two months. Yes. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his Any time, any time you tell people that you're going to jail if you become a homophobic, yes. if you oppose the laws we are trying to, uh, uh, to present, to uh, uh, lift up lesbians and sodomites to make them first-class citizens. You can't make a dog a first-class citizen. Amen. Amen. Now go back to Bible and correct me. Amen. And I'll say it again. You can't make a dog 
a first class citizen. You can't make a dog on anything but a dog. To blaspheme God. Take the Bible and make it a non-factor in people's lives when the Bible is the only stable force that can bring a family together and hold it together. Family that prays together stays together. But the family got to learn how to follow the word of God in order for you to pray to God. You got to know something about God. And I'm here to teach. I hope someone got a mind to hear and stop squabbling because I look like I look. And you can't do nothing about that. That's why I say you don't know who I am. When God sends a prophet, he is never really, really accepted. Jesus made a statement, ye who kill the prophets. Because people in each time period don't want to be guided and corrected. If they had a, stood up against Constantine, when he first introduced the first apostate movement to come to the Christian church after the death of the last apostle, approximately 50 years after the death of the apostle, I believe John was the last one. Constantine began to introduce laws and he claimed God gave him to change the apostolic message. He introduced the Trinity. He introduced Christmas. He introduced Easter. He introduced Lent. He introduced all these pagan festivals. Bible never mentioned anything about no Easter, Christmas, Lent. Why do we or I should say you, because we don't. Amen. Praise God. There always will be a spirit of the Antichrist. There always will be a beast. As Constantine was a beast in that dispensation of time, Obama is a beast in this dispensation of time. He's trying to change the very law of God. I believe I want Daniel 7 and jump right into verse 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the Is sa- that not what the Apostle John wrote on the Isle of Patmos about this beast, this spirit of the Antichrist? Did not Daniel look through the portals of time and see that same beast? He should read that again. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. He's going to speak against God. And shall wear out the saints of the Most High. And cause the church to be discouraged. That's what you have today. You've got a discouraged church. Hear me. Stand up and be counted, church. I'm talking about true church. I'm not talking about these, uh, these Creflo Dollars and Benny Hens and Joyce Mott. I'm not talking about those people. Those are social clubs. I'm talking about the church of God. Amen. Those of you, and to the person who emailed me, where can I go? Uh, I, I, can you recommend a church? I can't recommend no church where you're at. That's, right. That's why I told you to pack a suitcase and come here. I can recommend True Light here. Amen. Or move to Atlanta, or move to Savannah. Amen. 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 There'll be room enough for you. Right. Praise the Lord. We, we're not many, and we can't be many, of uh, 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 Matthew 7, yes. 13 and 14. I'm close. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. Now that's what the word of God said. Broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And how many? And many there be which go in their head. Now watch this contradiction here. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Destruction, many. Eternal life, few. Jeremiah mentioned of the remnant that shall escape. Brothers and sisters, we have escaped. We got to stay escaped. Don't return back to that field. And I say to you too, you got to stand up and be counted. You cannot vacillate. You can't be in a church and you say you know the leader's not teaching all the truth, but you don't pay no attention to what he's teaching. Why do you keep going back? Amen. Amen. Before a person rob a bank, he, 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 he goes to that bank and walks around it mm-hmm. time or two. That's right. Sometimes two or three weeks. Amen. Sometimes two or three months. Yes. Why? Because he got intentions that are not right. 
it's going to take something that don't belong to him. You keep going back to a false church and you keep going back, pretty soon you false yourself. Amen. If you wasn't false in the beginning, why are you going there? Amen. You can't go nowhere where you know there is wrong. You can't go nowhere where you know the spirit of truth is not there. How can you do it and call yourself a child of God? Yeah. Amen. So I'm sent to correct and to teach, and I hope, praise the Lord, these words have had an effect on you to make you at least consider. And these preachers who don't understand the word of God, now I want to correct this. I'm trying to sit down. Why do we wear the collar? Why are you imitating the Catholics? That's, that's how foolish you are. Amen. You made another fool out yourself. When our forefathers, the Puritans, were forced out of England because they made a statement that Jesus and God were one flesh or one in the same, and they forced him out of England uh, along with a split-off group called Quakers. Go to your history books and look up their dress apparel. They wore the turnaround collar and the black tunic coat. Right. They were called Puritans. Some history books erroneously called them pilgrims. Yeah. They were Puritans. That's right. And forced out of England because of their oneness stand. We wear the turnaround collar because we are oneness and we got a right to emulate the dress of our forefathers. Yeah. And during the time when the Puritans were wearing the turnaround collar. The Roman Catholic Church was wearing a, a wool robe, That's right. big hood, That's right. great big sleeves, yes. a rope belt with a cross hanging That's right. from the bottom of it, so it and big heavy Roman sandals. Yep. That's what the Catholic dress. And if you examine the Catholic Church, it was not till the early 1900s where they began to adopt this dress, and before that, the Methodists had, had, had the Puritan dress. That's right. they sure did. So get your facts right before you try to correct someone who's factual. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And now I think I'll correct you on the Nazareth vow and upon you shaving your head. Hypocrite. Amen. Now go before your people and explain to them why you shave your head. Well, I want to look like T.D. Jakes. So what? Who is T.D. Jakes but another hypocrite? You ought to try to look like Jesus. Whoops. Whoops. Love Talk Radio.